You sound like you're seasoned. And <laughs> and both Polly and myself here are, are now joined by Marla Donahue of the Irish Freedom Party and David uh, David Egan of Liberty Republic, formerly direct direct uh, democracy, who both uh, contested the general election here in Carlo Kilkenny. I keep going. Okay, um, guys, um, you've seen some some rough tally uh, results. Um, it's not going to be your day, unfortunately. But how would you sum up the experience of, of running in a general election? Well. To be honest, I'm a little bit surprised because I would have been calling door to door and I spoke to an awful lot of people and people were very, very annoyed with Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and just everything that was going on in the country. So I'm kind of surprised that they've gotten the numbers that they've gotten mm. considering, you know, you, you were at the door talking to people. So I'm, and then again, Sinn Féin, a bit of a shock there as well, you know, which I suppose that's what happens, isn't it? That's when it. people go out and vote. That's it. That's it. That's democracy, as they say. And and David, uh, this was your first first time running as well. You were kind of late to the race. Um, uh, how did you find find the the experience as a whole? Well, it was good, positive. You know, um, I enjoyed it. It was to get out and meet the people and see what's happening and see what they think actually and see where the problems really lie. You know, and get it first hand from the people, not from media or the like. You know, that's kind of compromised, I would say. But anyway, um. Yeah, it's been positive enough. And it's a big constituency to try uh, canvas. I'm, I'm sure you had you had a small team behind you, but, e but even at that, it's, it's still a huge challenge. Well, basically, I, I had a small team. It was myself <laughs> because I work a normal job and I, you know, I had limited time in the evenings to get everywhere and it was quite difficult. So I didn't get to as many as I wanted to get to. But, you know, next time going forward, if we do this again, which I probably will, I'll have it better worked out. Yeah, exactly. And I, now I hand you over to my colleague, uh, Paddy Manning. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if you could pick a highlight of the campaign, uh, one each, what was your highlight? Actually getting out and doing it was my big one, for me anyway, because as I said, I was quite private up to now. Um, I even got rid of Facebook a couple of years ago, you know. But I had to reignite that again. So uh, just to, just to actually stand up and do it was a big thing for me, you know. And Orla? Well, I do PR media, so I talk to a lot of people. And I have to say, I enjoy that at the doors. You know, I'm quite relate relatable to people. I'm easy to talk to. I have a bit of crack, you know. So um, I enjoy that at the doors. Like, there were some great characters. Like, you'd have a great laugh. And I have to say, I was always very lucky. I never got any hassle at the doors or anything like that. Um, I think I had a very good approach as well. But, like, I enjoyed meeting people. I enjoyed hearing stories. Now, obviously, not the, the bad stories. But, you know, as I said, that whole positive thing of it was very, very good. And we spoke about this earlier. You hear some awful stories on doors. You, f you hear positivity, but people have gone through tough times. People go through tough times. They're currently experiencing issues. Um, how do you find that in terms of going home and dealing with that yourselves and processing that and having heard these stories? Did it take a toll at all on you? Well, it does. You can think about it. You can dwell on it a little bit. But um, if you let it dwell on you too much, it just get in too far on you. And, you, you know, you go down that rabbit hole, you're, you know, it's too far. Um, you, you just have to... Look, it's the government to have the people in these, the situation that they're in, in the hard times. They're not being helped whatsoever. Resources aren't there. They're not being told to just keep paying your taxes and go away. We're not giving you anything. It just has to stop, you know. And Arla? Well, how long is a piece of string? What I came across, um, I brought a notepad with me and I took down notes of everybody I spoke to. I mean, some of the situations were absolutely dire. I met one lady and her son um, had Down syndrome and he's five and a half years old and five and a half years waiting for speech therapy. I met another grandmother who had two children, 11 and 12, non-verbal, again, waiting for speech therapy. You know, it was just the, the, the years of waiting, whether it was, you know, for OT, respite, it was just absolutely shocking. And then the elderly, I, I met an awful lot of elderly at the door. And like one, one lady stood out to me, she was 80 years old. And she was saying to me, she had to make that decision every day between putting heat, you know, we'll say coal in the fire and heat in her house and turning on the electricity. And she had worked all her life. And I met a lot of elderly like that. Like, what sort of government do we have where this situation is going on? Like, it was absolutely shocking. And every evening I used to go home 
and I used to write out the notes and I used to do a video of what I came across during the day. Because as I said, even if I didn't get voted in, I could at least highlight what I was meeting at the doors. And as I said, I could go on all day with what I met. It was just shocking. It's a massive constituency. It's also traditionally Fianna Fáil's best constituency. Do you reckon, it doesn't look like it's going to be your day based on the tallies. Do you reckon, had you been in a different constituency or if you might have had a better shot or like it's your first time in a general election uh, will you run again? Well, so. This is it it's the first time general election Be I'd be an unknown so people are going to say who's this lad or you know what's he going to do or what can he do um, but yeah I would run again you know the name my name is out there now um, not to as many as I would like to meet in person but look yeah I would give it a go again yeah why not and Arla? I don't know I think we'll have a regroup afterwards and chat. We might change current candidates and things like that. Um, like, I don't know if it would have made a difference been in a different area. I really don't, because at the end of the day, we are up against like two to three big powerhouses between Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and Sinn Féin. How do we compete with that? We're a much smaller party. We don't get the funding. We don't get the media coverage. So how do you go up against those big guns? Do you know what I mean? It is very, very difficult. I'm going to pass it back to Paul now. You actually make a good point. Um, you're both in kind of small, but we class as nationalist parties. Do you think it would make sense in the long term for parties like yourself to kind of coalesce together either through some sort of formal alliance or a merger or something like that in order to kind of create that critical mass and win win seats um, and get elected to the all? Well, I think that's something that will have to be talked about among the different parties and the different you know leaders of the different parties. Um, maybe it's something that can be looked at, but we'll have to see what way things pan out now today, anyway, or the next few days or the next, you know. And then there's also an issue with vote splitting as well, like having too many candidates, too similar. Like it, it's okay maybe having two candidates running, but mm. you know, if you have more candidates, like there were some areas with five nationalist yeah. candidates running, and that's getting into your vote splitting, which can affect things as well. That's that's what happened an awful lot in the local elections. I know in Carlow Town, mm. there was four of us running and that split the vote. So that's another issue as well, mm -hmm. that maybe we're just, if we did amalgamate into one party just to run maybe one or two candidates and leave it at that, you know. Um, but again, as I said, we're, look, it's going to take years. You know, we're up against big powerhouses, mm. you know, who have money and backing behind them where nationalist parties don't. No, that's that, that's very true. But thanks a million for taking the time, uh, both Arla and David to take for talking to us here on the Irish Political Roundup. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be your day, it, it looks like, but we wish you every success for the future. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very welcome.